Okay. Um, so this presentation is just going to be a continuation of what we've done yesterday, um, last night. Kind of a con continuation, but um, just going back over the points that we um, went over. So first thing what I want to bring out is, um, what I want to talk about first is focus. I just want to spend a few minutes on focus um, in the context of approaching um, Bible study and the studying in general, listening to your presentation, a video. So um, I was talking about this last night and I think I realised it's very important that a lot of people say they struggle to watch a presentation or listen to a presentation because they just cannot focus. They cannot just focus on a given task. Um, you know, the mind's all over the place. You know, it's here, there and everywhere. You know, it's, a, it's bouncing around the room. And we can't keep still. And um, and we can be like that. We, have, we can be like that. So, um, I want to look at, you know, concentration you know so what is what is concentration you know the way I see it is it's the, the, you know your ability to keep your awareness on a specific thing for um, an, ex, an extended period of time the ability to do that the ability to in the context of studying you have the ability to watch a presentation and be present in that presentation, to be fully um, to fully focus upon on that presentation for that hour, you know, and enough everything around you is not distracting you. You've you, you're giving all your hundred percent to the presentation, and that's the struggle I find with myself, and other people have that have similar struggles as well. So. Um, I've learned, you know, many tips on how to deal with this. I'll probably give two tips. I'm just going to spend ten minutes on this, and then we're going to go into the study. So, um, in approaching the study, I think what I've found out what's important is to. Um, let me run the board. So. Forget. So what I mean by that is, you see the brain, um, that wants me to prove this, scientific, no, I mean the brain is not good at multitasking, you know, so you're either fully present or you're fully not, you know, so if you're not, if you're not, um, if you're not fully present on the topic, on the, on the study or in the presentation, or even just speaking to somebody, you know, that means it's going to be difficult to learn if your focus is split. So if your focus is, you know, if your focus is here and there, that means the study, what you're trying to present, trying to watch, it's, you're not giving your 100% to the, to the Pacific study because your focus is split. Your, your brain, so that means your brain, it's like you're trying to multitask with your brain and it's not... It, it's not it's not working out when you're trying to take in what a, vid, a presenter is saying because you know you're giving um it's like split focusing basically and your brain's not good with that does that make sense so imagine someone's presenting i'm presenting right now you know um so you're supposed to give all your attention to this presentation and what tends to happen is when we watch a presentation um, other things is going on in your space so other things is going on it's maybe you know you got kids making noise running around you've got music probably playing in the background other people speaking up. and then there's other things racing in your mind oh no I gotta, I gotta clean up um, 
what's for lunch, I need to prepare lunch, I need to do this, I need to do that. So you've got like a to-do to -do list running through your mind while you're trying to take in what the speaker's saying. So you're just distracted, you know. So you're not really 100% there because, oh, you know, maybe your desk is piled up with so many books, other things that takes away your focus. You know, so you've got a messy desk and you're like, okay. You look at something and it takes your attention away. It happens. You know, so you're thinking about what's for lunch today or what's going to happen. And so you're not there in the present. I think this is the problem with Zoom. <laughs> this can be a problem with Zoom. Yeah. That we're not in the room with each other. And so we can focus on other things in our space, like you're saying, which is a distraction. And we can even fall asleep and there's no one there to wake you up. Because, you know, all, I'm sure all of us, or maybe maybe not all of us, but most of us have had the experience where you're watching a screen and you fall asleep. Yeah. And it's really hard not to. But when you're in the flesh interacting, we can even do that in church, but there's someone there to nudge you and say, wake up, mm. maybe. And also, yeah. we're falling asleep sometimes... It could be because you're not focused as well. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes, it's how you're sitting. It's are you sitting up to learn? Are you sitting up to hear? Or are you just slouching with the attitude? Lying down. Or lying down. I'm not really bothered, like. But, so it's all about your state of mind and your, even your, your posture. You know, if you want, sometimes, you know when people want to learn, they kind of lean forward. Like when you're really interested, you're like, you're like what did he say? It's like there's, you put body language into it. And usually, if there's lack of interest, you kind of like slouch back, lay back. You know, your body tells you know you, your body tells you that. Okay, I'm not really I'm not really interested. You know. So <laughs> Brother Tom, it's happening now to <laughs> Yeah. So you know what I'm talking about. So let me just read a little quote. So what we want to do is do all that we can to attune into the present, to attune ourselves into what's being presented to us. It's like a father, a parent, attuning into what a child's saying to them. They're giving all the 100% to what the child's saying. And if they're not giving all, if they're not attuned, that means their mind's elsewhere. It's here, there and everywhere while the child's trying to tell them something. And you're not taking in what the child's saying. It's the same with representation. So, let me just read a quote. I'm not going to say where it's from. So, focus allows us to train our brain power on a particular task to burn through that task. It's amazing what we can accomplish when we're focused. Conversely, when we're less focused, we're less likely to accomplish what we, tr what we truly want to do because we're just not committed both emotionally and physically to doing it the prime enemy to focus is distraction so the prime enemy to focus is just being distracted that's the enemy and that's the enemy that we want to conquer but um but how so a teacher asked a teacher may ask a, a student why can't you just focus? Well, why can't you just concentrate? You know why. And then the student may say, um, a simple answer. Maybe I've never learned to. I've never been taught how to concentrate. I've never, I've never been taught how to focus. You're just telling me to, you're asking me why. Why can't I do this? I've never been taught. Is it? Yeah, some, some ways, yeah. So, there's many things in life. I think what Emma was saying this morning, I missed my, well, I missed it, but what, when she was telling me, like, after the um, presentation is, there's many things what school teaches us, but there's many things that school does not teach us. What's beneficial to us, what follows us all the way throughout, throughout our life, you know, what's beneficial to our whole, whole emotional well-being, us as a person. And one of the things I'm saying is important is learning how to focus and, you know, learning how to just stay focused on a, on a given task. You know, so we find ourselves, our minds wandering here, there and everywhere. And you're like, 
I can't stop it. It's hard to stop. But we've never been, have I ever been taught how to? Have, have you ever been taught how to focus? No, I haven't even thought about that. Um, so what I'm saying is, so concentration, focusing is something that can be learned. You can learn how to focus. Yeah. So let me read something else. So, and the more you learn, the more you practice concentration, the better you, the better you get. So, so contrast to concentration. What most of us practice is distraction with an uneven balance. So instead of concentration, what's being put into practice is distraction. So you got concentration and distraction. Put it on the board. So, con concentration, distraction, um, oh, that's exaggerated. Eighteen hours. No. 18 hours it can look like that but not an un 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 uneven balance of concentration and distraction concentration is focusing on a given task and distraction is just allowing yourself to be distracted procrastination whatever it may be well, I could put one hour concentration and 23 hours distraction. <laughs> I could put it like that. So, um, concentrate, contrast to concentration, what, what most of us practice instead is distraction with an uneven balance. We allow our minds to jump from thought to thought and maybe with the help of technology, it helps us. We have many things, devices to help us with putting distraction into practice. You know, until we become what experts of it, spending hours on it in the day. Imagine if you put concentration into practice. So we spend a lot of time putting in, you know, putting distraction into place. Distraction could be media, technology. It could be daydreaming. Castle, Ellen White calls it castle building. And when you add up the time. When you add up the time of castle building or daydreaming, you'd be surprised how much time you spend on it in a day. Yeah, you know, um, you made a good point there in terms of learning how to, um, learning how to be, I think you can learn to be distracted. I remember before I used to, I never used to use so much social media on my, my phone. And, um, I was able to sit down and concentrate on something for a long time. But I think, I was watching a documentary the other day, and it's literally the way social media is designed, it's designed to basically distract you. Like, you just, you're jumping from thought to thought, you know, like if you're on Instagram, Facebook, you're just scrolling and scrolling, what's next, okay, next, yeah. or you know, what's next, what's yeah. next, or what's this. Even something on YouTube, be like, you can't even watch a, 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 you know, an album of five seconds, you know, you just like, you know, in the halfway through a video. I think everything is just kind of on demand, and as soon as your mind thinks that you can go on it, as soon as my mind wants to watch this thing, or see this thing, or get that photo up, or get this whatever, you can just do it instantly. And I think, um, I think I've definitely trained myself to, to be this more distracted than I, than I used to be, and, and you start thinking about um, different things at this time. And it also was also saw something where, like your brain is you 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 basically can't multitask. You just switch from one task to another task, and the longer you spend on a task, the more efficient you become at doing that task. If that makes sense. But when you switch, it's like you have to do the whole startup energy each time, mm. and it becomes very very difficult to do um to do well when you when you're jumping back and forth. Mm. Yeah. I was going to say that about multitasking. We've made multitasking actually a positive thing. You know, they often say, well, women can multitask and men can't, you know, that kind of thing. And 
and then people will say no I can multitask like in defense like it's a good thing and like you just said that you can't multitask you go from one task to another and that process is probably quite damaging because you have to start all over again it reminds me of digestion you know when you put something else in there your digestion starts all over again and the, the bit that's already half digested starts to ferment and putrefy because you haven't really done it properly so if you're watching a video then you switch to social media start reading what someone else's message then you go from forum to forum with different messages and different threads of doctrine it's really confusing it's actually and, and do you get anything properly you've just you've got bits from here and there and nothing is solid yeah and that's why I think a lot of these forums, it's not helpful. It's not helpful at all in growth in the message, for instance, which is what it's designed to do. If it's designed for that, I mean, it's probably more than one thing. Maybe it's social, but if it's designed to help people grow in the message, I don't think it's very good at that. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, I can also just say one more thing as well. I think <laughs> even just how we, we have everything, like... We have so many videos nowadays in the message. I'll be honest, I think it's made me very lazy when it comes to reading. I've kind of like, I find reading a lot harder after because of everything and just watching. And I don't know if anyone who feels this. I think a couple of people have mentioned it. Um, and it's made me very lazy when it comes to reading. So this, I think I'm just reinforcing the point that you said that you can learn kind of bad habits when it comes to reading and learning. And the more, it's just easier to kind of put a video and watch it and rather than read something and try to extract the information yourself. Mm. You know, so, you know, some, it's almost like someone's giving you baby formula. You know, that's easier than having to like chew the carrots yourself and digest it. Mm. Someone's giving you already digested formula. It's easier, but then you lose um, like the ability to chew and digest properly. So I think, I think I've definitely um, become less, I find, it, I find it a lot harder to read nowadays. Even even on my PhD, yeah, I tend to just watch things on YouTube rather than um, read. I find reading quite difficult, but it's something you can you can you can learn to do and something you can and learn to do. Mm. Hey man, like I'm on an Instagram fast <laughs> because Instagram. I sometimes there's this thing called doomsday scrolling, and it's when you're in a bad place and you're just constantly scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Because like Tom said, it you're looking for a dopamine hit. To yeah. make you, because that's what it relies on. Yeah, yeah. You know, someone something, something comments. You're just looking for the for this hit of happiness. I was like, no, nope, you've got to come off this app, surely. Like, it is a platform. I believe that social media can be such a powerful platform, but you have to be aware of how you're using it. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really important thing. But I will be throwing a bit of a caveat. I think some people's minds, like mine. Jumping from one thing to another to another is great for me in terms of study. So, for example, I'm, I don't do well with just, I've never been, even in school, just staring at one screen and just listening to someone just talk or go through PowerPoint, PowerPoint slide after PowerPoint. That, for me personally and how my brain works, I find it very difficult and this is before the age of social media in school I was always the child that would be like colouring in her book in different colours like each line would be a different colour and, and my mind is very abstract it jumps from you know thing to thing to thing to thing so I think although I get that you know there is this you know there is counsel there is you know, scientific research. I don't think every mind is the same, and I just want to throw a bit of a caveat in there. That for some of us, especially me, just the way my brain works, like I can watch a presentation, pause it, didn't look Google. Okay, I want to find out more about this point that was brought. Okay, let me quickly leave a voice note to Magda or Daisy or Curtis. Oh, I saw this, and I think you guys have seen it sometime in the group. I just post stuff and I see it and I link it because that's just how my mind works. It sees, it's almost like, imagine a galaxy with all these different stars and, you know, that that's just how my brain works. So I think although there is um, scientific research and, you know, there is counsel from Ellen White and we do have, you know, there is truth in what you're, everyone's saying. I just want to give the, my point of view from someone whose brain doesn't work like that and has never worked like that, even from childhood. Yeah, on that point as well, um, it's true that we all learn in different ways, we all think in different ways, and you know your way of thinking, I know my way of thinking, and with our unique ways of learning, 
um, with that we can be distracted from using our unique way of learning um, that can be distracted you know so the way I like to learn um, it's definitely definitely not, not by listening um, so I struggle to listen to a presentation um, you're just gonna go through one yeah well not I'm just not gonna get I'm just not gonna get I have my way of learning and if I if I approach that presentation with my way of learning I'll be able to get more than what I would get if I was to listen um, I know you, you know you can learn train to listen but there's cer there's certain ways of learning what's unique to you um, let me give two examples um, say visual um, visual reading um, it's actually scientific actually there's um what I've researched before that there's eight ways of learning um how people think sorry um but we'll go on, go we we'll go into it uh, for at a later time so um so yes what was I saying now ways of learning you struggle to listen um. yeah we all have different ways of learning and um it's understanding your way of learning and if you know your way of learning and you're not using that way of learning what is stopping you so Sophie what, what will be stopping you from you learning the way you learned the way you taking information are you doing it to your fully I mean it's not a question it's not for you to answer but are you, are you able to do that to your fullest or have you allowed something to distract you or have you allowed Twitter to interfere with that way of for, for your way of learning if, if, you've, if something's distracting you from doing you then what is that distraction, basically? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. Um, and I think that the key thing, there's two things that discourage me first is because there's, there's this perception that there's one style that's better than the other. I think that's my own insecurity. I think we're also, you know, as in conservative, because we've always believed that, you know, if you're not cracking open a Bible and spending seven hours in it, you know, that's not a legitimate study. Um, and I think, you know, Tess encourages us, you know, watch documentaries, but don't just watch them and just mind, like you said, Leon, like watch it and then be on Twitter and be on Instagram. You're not really there. But actually engage, okay, what am I getting from this? How does this fit into, you know, I was speaking to Tess about, I want to start painting again. And it's like, I think that's the key, isn't it? it it's taking all of these different tools, but focusing on that activity. And yeah, this is, a time for me to learn rather than, like you said, I'm doing it, but I'm only doing it half-heartedly because I'm trying to do a million other things that aren't necessary to this study at the same time. Mm. Um, Debbie asks, how do we strengthen our mind? And that, that question, well, the answer is, will be given in a different study, um, in a different presentation. Oops, in a different series. Sorry, one sec. So how do we strengthen our brains? It's an important question. Um, and now it'll be, be a good study. So we'll address that. Repetition is neat, deepens impression. You can say that, but I, 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 I would I would challenge that as well. You can switch people off. Sometimes repetition is not the best thing. I, I found this thing. Um, it's called the Pomodoro timer. It's like a concept. It's like a, you know, like, like a Pomodoro, I think it's like Italian for tomato or something like that. And then you have these cooking tomato timers. Um, yeah. You know, like you're only cooking, you're like, oh, and he's cooking for 15 minutes. And, you know, before people had smartphones or whatever, you'd, you'd use that as a timer. Um, so this concept, and, and, and I tried it, and it actually worked quite well for me. Um, I just need to be consistent with it. Basically, um, I got this app on my, on my desktop, and I needed to, to write something. And, and when it comes to writing, I think I find it difficult to read. When it comes to writing, it's, it's shocking. And, you know, I'm doing a PhD, so I have to do a lot of writing, I have to write 
I was writing a chapter of my thesis. <laughs> and um, so what I did, I used this thing to, basically, it's kind of like you set, you, you set like a timer and it kind of does it automatically. It says, okay, for 25 minutes, you're just going to focus on this and don't like, don't be distracted. You do that work for 25 minutes and it rewards you with a five minute break, you yeah. know, five minute break or whatever, 10 minute break. Then you go for another 25 minutes and then it gives you another break. And like once you do it four times, it gives you a 20 minute break or something like that. So you, you I think it's also knowing that, it, you know, especially when it's hard, it's good to have like also, um, like an end to it, like knowing, okay, I'm doing this for so long, I can manage 25 minutes. So someone says, okay, you need to focus on this for 25 minutes. It's easy rather than saying, oh, I need to focus on this for, you know, yes. <laughs> until your brain is tired. Yeah. So I, I think, I think, I think that worked for me. Um, so is it giving yourself rewards every time? You know, a break here, another 25 minutes, another reward, a break. Yeah, so the, the word is, it's like five minutes, you can do whatever you want. You can, then that's when you can go to on Instagram, that's when you can do whatever. Um, and then you, you just come back to it, and you know, okay, I'm only doing this for another time. And it's, it's manageable chunks. Yeah. Like 25 minutes is much more manageable than, um, than much longer. And I, I think that even, even science says that you shouldn't be studying for more, you shouldn't focus on something without a break for more than like 40 minutes or something like that. 40 or 50 minutes. Um, so yeah then the other thing i also think is interest when i find something interesting i can work on that thing for like five hours without without a break just because of interest all this is work so i think sometimes it's also how we perceive what we're doing <laughs> if you perceive it like joy and fun you can do it actually for a very very long time um whereas if you perceive it as work it may be because a bit more difficult to do yeah so let me give an extra tip on top of that um and the 25 minute and five minute break thing works as well because um i do that as well um where i will work it's like planning actually you're planning your time okay i'm gonna study or do this for 25 minutes and then have a five minute break and it, i think it really makes a big big difference when you put it into practice and I'll, i'm a, i'm a living testament for that because it, it, it has for me um so when it comes to, so back to my original point, when it comes to your mind wandering in a presentation, um, so when you're, you're watching a video, you know, you're reading a document, or you're just approaching something what, what requires attention and focus. I think my hair's been cut in. Oh, okay, yeah. Is that better? That's alright, yeah. Oh. Um, so you're watching something, or you're doing something, you know, you, you, you're in a Bible study or you're trying to do your own Bible study, but you find yourself, you find your mind here, there and everywhere. Like, you could be like dealing with habit, habitual daydreaming, you know, or something's on your mind, what's important and it's pressing you, but it's not, but it's not urgent. You know, you don't need to deal with it, you know, in the moment, you know, and then you try not to think about it. But the more you try that, the more you resist it, the more it just persists. You know, so you can't get away from it even though you're trying to resist it, but it just keeps persisting, it keeps coming back. You know, it's like you're not winning. So it's a little tip. I've tried it, it works. It works for me. Um, if, you're in a, if you're in a study, in a presentation, or you're about to do your own devotion, or wherever it is, um, and you got these thoughts racing through your head. You're daydreaming and you can't stop it. Or you got a to-do list and you're running through your mind. Or something important is running through your mind. Have a notebook. And what you do. Um, so what, what you want to do is. Um, here's your notebook. You know, here's your thoughts. You know, racing through your mind. Capture your thoughts and let's write it down. Write it down. Yeah. Write it down. What you're doing is you're just releasing. You just release. You're just releasing it temporary. You're just releasing those thoughts temporary. You know your to-do list. 
you're daydreaming, whatever it is running through your mind, you just release it onto the paper and it helps, you know, and you just say, you know what, I'm going to address this later on, not right now, I'm going to address it later on. You know, in other words, schedule, so this, these are just distractions, yeah? So in the, in the times of distractions, there's many things going on, you know, your study time, your devotion time, and whatever else. So schedule your distractions, so okay, I'm going to come back to this, maybe, I don't know, 8.30pm. I'll come back to this, schedule your distractions, say okay, this is running through my mind, but you know what, what are you doing, you set a specific time, you know, schedule in your schedule, yeah, and so all the worries, all the worries what may be running through your head, you know, it's at the forefront of your mind and just tell yourself, you know what, I'll worry about this later, it may come back in 20 minutes, but if you, if you, if you set a time and say, you know what, at 8pm, I'll worry about this, at 7pm I'll worry about this, I'll come back to this at this specific time, yeah, and usually, try it out, let me know, usually it works, so you're releasing that thought onto paper, let me read these comments, you're releasing those thoughts, um, onto paper, um, so the, the, the last point I want to make before we go into the study, um, oh no, 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 so reviewing, so while you're in a presentation, so this one's about reviewing and taking notes, so while you're listening to a speaker, while you're watching a video, or if you just engage in some, some sort of Bible study, what you want to do is, you know, you normally review after, but even like throughout the study, um, yeah, so you want to review, ask clarifying questions um, on a specific point, or ask for it to be repeated. Take notes while you're listening. Take notes. Um, write down points that the speaker's saying, and this helps with the concentration. And when I and when I talk about notes, I'm not talking about transcribing word for word, because even that, you probably not even concentrating. You just listen to the things, listening to what's being said word for word. Take notes. Ask questions. Okay, what does he mean by this? I, I didn't get what he said here, but. Write down, okay, I'm going to come back to this later, I want to know what this means. So just write down things, what stick out to you. And have goals, what do you want to get from this presentation? What do you want to hear, what do you want to take from it? You know, um, what can I learn from this? Um, it's just adopting an attitude. Um, what else? So paraphr sometimes when you listen to a presentation, usually when, if, when it's been translated, you know, when you listen to a Tesla poem in a presentation and you see you hear it being translated. So in that gap, in that space of time when the translator is speaking, just paraphrase what the, what, the, what the speakers have said. Just paraphrase it back in your in your mind. In your own so, words. Brother Leon. Yeah? Can I ask a question for clarity? To clarify my question. Yeah, go, go ahead. Um, what do you mean by review? Do you mean take notes and review later on or do you mean reviewing within... So kind of like, more review afterwards, but you, um, I think you can also kind of review while you're studying, while you're in the present, also you know, probably during the Bible study, if time permits, for like, you know, just little reviews, okay, like pondering on a thought, hmm, yeah, I get that, I understand that, you know, you're kind of processing something, and while you're processing something, that means you kind of focus on what's being given to you, what's being fed to you. Contrast to your mind daydreaming and wondering on what's for lunch. Your mind's on what's being fed to you right now. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> one of the things that I yeah. do, can I add to this list? Yeah, add to it. Um, one of the things that I do, I like to actually draw out what the speaker's saying. You know, we, t we take, yeah. you know, do pictorial. So, your way of learning, yeah? You're using it to, that's what you're using. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 
it, it's not going to work for everyone. But yeah. I, I like to draw out, you know, or make an image of what's being said. Yeah. And it just helps later on. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good thing. While you're right, right, while you're studying, probably like, okay, you made this point, but for me to kind of process this and remember it to make it stick, let me just draw a picture. What this means to me. What does this mean to me? How do I understand this? Maybe just draw it out. Like Sophie, she likes. To, I think she likes to paint. I think that's what you said. Do what you do to learn better. You know, and to understand. Emma. And Rich has just put there, use your own words without changing the thought of what was said. And that's kind of what Elder Pamina has been teaching us for years. Get yeah. this Bible verse and what's it saying? What's it actually saying? Let's put it into English or mm. change the words, make them simpler to say what is mm. this actually saying? And when you break it into the simple words. I think summarising is good. It's similar to review. So afterwards I might go yeah. through the presentation and summarise the key points, what, what, they've actually, mm. what the speaker's trying to get across. Yeah, so Richard, what you said is good because Simple when you're writing notes, it's good to kind of... Not just transcribe a sentence, what the speaker said, but write it in your own words. And when you're doing that, your mind's engaged, your brain's engaged in what's being said, mm. and you're processing it, you turn it into your own study, basically. You know, it means you've took it in. You know, um, that's another thing um, I was going to mention. So, you know, you're paraphrasing, you know, when you're writing, you know, you're paraphrasing it. You know, you're writing it out in your own words, you know. And then, obviously at the end of the study, this is a separate point, but you kind of go back and review on your notes, you reflect, and it helps it to be solid, solidified in your mind, and you imagine in your mind, you know, when you're paraphrasing it back, you imagine in your mind that you're teaching it to somebody else. So you're paraphrasing what you've learned, and you, you imagine... I'm presenting it to someone or I'm teaching it to somebody and it helps you to remember and then when you do review review in slots so like daily reviews hourly reviews and the more you do it like that in intervals it helps it to stick rather than just write notes and just put it on the shelf until it, for it to collect dust and then forget about the presentation or forget what, what's been taught and that's why many times we, f we forget what the message has been teaching us, what the what Tess and Parliament has been teaching us, because we write notes and we don't go back to the notes. So when they come and present the same thing again, you're like, I can't remember this. A prime example is Acts 27. <laughs> the amount of times we've been taught Acts 27, and every time it's been presented, we're like, this is new, I can't remember this. Because we don't go over our notes. <laughs> And we've experienced that in court, Henry, so I'm not making it up. <laughs> but I thought just the very act of writing things down stays in your mind more than not writing it down. Yeah, it does, yeah, it does. Longer, but if you don't review, then over a period of time, you'll just... So you'll lose it still. You know, so you got to be active with what you've written down. You know, get active with it. And what you're writing. You know. Um, so the last thing... I just want to say quickly, Liam, just before you go into that, so me and Daisy were just speaking about mind maps. I don't know if anyone's ever done mind mapping. Um, it. it sounds like, whoa, mind mapping, but it's, it's literally where you draw a map and it breaks off in different parts and, you know, you explore this point and explore that point. And it's really, really powerful because you can take a very, very complex subject and start to break it down and you just put a word here, a word there, so for mine I do pictures a lot, a picture here, a word there, and it's, you know, if, if anyone's ever heard, you know, the term spider diagram, it's a bit like um, a spider diagram on steroids, where it like breaks off, or you can break a really, really complex idea into smaller bits, and if you think about, because another thing is that really helps me is that methodology of, you know, parable teaching and that nature so it's like you know imagine in our I don't know if anyone's seen pictures of inside your body and your nerves you've got this network you know and you've got the the center of the nerve and then you've got all these you know tendons that break off and it's kind of like that that's kind of like what mind map is you have this key point so it might be Acts 27 and then you have all these avenues it's like well, even like a road map you might have London in the middle and then all these A roads and you know motorways and you know, B roads that, you know, little paths and it just 
you know, allows you to zoom into an issue. And I, it's been, if anyone struggles with taking lots of notes and writing lots of sentences, mind mapping can really help you take, especially with sometimes, you know, <laughs> bless Kaminda and Tess, but they can sometimes talk at like 100 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. And if it's new to you um, and you're trying to take it all down, while keep up, it's like, eh, I, I, I can only do one or the other. I've either just got to transcribe, which doesn't do anything, or I've just got to listen. But if you mind map, it takes that pressure off because you're only putting a word here, a word there, and linking it all together. Um, so me and Daisy, I mean, Daisy's even done Bible studies with um, mind maps. And, we, you know, we don't mind doing a week presentation if anyone's interested. But, you know, it, it does really, really help. Um, you know, Daisy got like used that method at uni. She got a first. Like her friend Anthony at uni did it. He got a first. So it's a really great way to take lots of information and just distill it, distill it in a way um, that's really, really easy without making like pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of notes. Hmm. Yeah, on that point, there's 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 a lot of techniques how to remember stuff. Techniques. What we just haven't, we, no one's taught us. That. The 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 um the common method of remembering something is just repeating it. You know, you get a quote, then we just keep repeating it over and over and over again until it sticks. It, no. Memorization. Bias. That's how I learned my tables. Repetition. That's so, I mean, I mean, uh, I studied with my little grandson the other day, and I remembered a lot. But so just repetition, constant. There's 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 powerful methods to remember something just. In one go, there's there's powerful memorization methods that helps you to, to to have things stuck in your brain. Um, there's one I'm using right now. It's you know you you're using your um, imagination, you're using visualization and association. So um, you're connecting information to an object, to ob different objects, and I'm telling you it sticks in your head rather than me repeating it over and over again because it just goes. If you give me a list of items. I can go over it ten times. I'll probably forget the order. You know, it's like it's gone. Sorry. Once I once I start reading it, I have to turn a piece of paper around. I'm sorry, it's gone. <laughs> like I can't remember. I can't remember the first. I can't remember the last. The the middle. But listen, when you use this technique, you what I, what I've been using. Listen, I remember the whole thing. You know, in sequential order and reverse order, just like that. Is that the Jim Quick one? It's not called that. Um, it's got a name. I forgot the name of it. Um, Can you give us an example of what you do? You just associate the, the, the so, word at the top of the list to an object. Okay, let me give an example. So, so this is like mind mapping as well. It's a technique. It's sim so there's so many ways. Um, yeah. So say if you want to remember. So give me a, give me a list of um, key Shopping. players in Bible prophecy. Key players? Yeah. Okay, so Adam, say... Adam, Moses. Oh, what you, you mean? Joe... Biden. Oh, okay. Trump. Trump. I don't know. Camilla Harris. Um, AOC. Oh, Moses. Oh, Moses. Okay. Um, oh, I see you're trying to do. James. White. Um, give me someone else. Um, oh, politics, actually. Politics? Yeah. AOC? AOC. Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson, yeah. Mm. Boris. Okay, so if I was to say, if I was to make. Actually, guys, okay, see this list? I want you to remember these names. Yeah. Oh, some of these names we know, to be honest. But I want, I want, you, to, I want you to remember these names, these key players um, in prophecy. I mean, I mean, not Moses, he's not, but. What is prophecy? Yeah. yeah. Policy. Brother Leon, just to let you know, you have 20 minutes. 20 minutes, yeah. Okay, thanks. So imagine you have these key players, and you need you need to remember them, or there's something about them that you want to remember. But you need to know this list, and you want to know it in order. So if you to say, if I was to say, okay, remember remember this list in its order. I give you twenty seconds to memorize it, and in twenty seconds I'm gonna I'm gonna um, rub this off, and I want you to tell me what was you know tell me all these names in order. You may get the first name, you may get the last name, but it's going to be a struggle, admit it. 
one way is to memorise the uh, the first letter of each one as a as a you remember the letter patterns. That's how they teach memorisation sometimes. So you say J T M J A B, J T M Jab. And if yeah. you remember the first letter, you might get the rest. But that, yeah. some people find that really effective. But yeah, there's lots of but, techniques. But my technique, what's effective for me is you associate these people, these names to to something. So like, okay, this is on the spot. So um, I didn't prepare for this. So imagine. You walk into a camp meeting, you walk into a Kefinley camp meeting, uh -huh. you walk into the building, and as you get to the door, you see Joe Biden, Kefinley door, entrance. So you get to the entrance, and you see Joe Biden, and you know, you shake his hand, and then, you, so you gotta have a place that you know in mind, yeah? So. Then again, we all don't know Kathleen. So just think of a camp meeting or a big building that you know. So you get to the entrance of the door, you shake Joe Biden's hand. So you, what you do, you're making a movie in your head, and movies stick in your head, yeah, stories stick that. in your head. Yeah. When you tell stories, yeah. it sticks. Yeah, so what you're doing, you're telling a story, and people like to tell stories. Yeah. Yeah, Leon. Yeah. Um, just along with that concept. Um, I think it's called mind castles so like the same thing where you think of a place that's familiar to you like your bedroom yeah, yeah. and because you you know your bedroom in and out you know where everything is yeah. pretty much and so when you think of let's say Joe Biden or whatever picture um, and it can be really silly Joe yeah. Biden in your top drawer <laughs> you know yeah. standing in your top drawer um, and Trump a MAGA poster on the wall yeah, and it's really silly things, as you say, because your mind loves abstract ideas, and if you can associate them with stuff that's already familiar to you, then yeah. it sticks a lot easier. And it works. So get a room. Pardon, sorry. It works, doesn't it? Sure, quite as much. Yeah, it does. It does. You get a room, and then you put things like you would a lamp on a desk. You put a your whatever you picture James White to look like <laughs> on where your lamp is. And yeah, it does work. So I give testament to that. Yeah. So you walk through the door. You, you walk through the entrance of the door. Okay. No, it's too late now. So, and then you see Trump running down the stairs. So he's running down the stairs. And he tells you, Moses. Is serving lunch in the kitchen so you go to the kitchen you run to the kitchen and you see Moses serving out food so what's the story so far you get to, you get to the entrance of Kefinley and you shake Joe Biden's hand then as you walk in you see Moses running down the stairs I mean you see Trump running down the stairs and he says Moses is serving lunch in the kitchen so Joe Biden, Trump, Moses. You get to the kitchen, Moses is there serving lunch. And then you go find somewhere to sit. And you go to where the white chairs are and then you see James White sitting down. And James White says, sit by me. Sit by me. Let me think of something else. <laughs> um, so the next one is ALC. So we're going to add her to the story now. And she starts giving a speech to everyone who's sitting down at lunch. She gives a lunch speech. She stands up. Yeah, she stands up you. on the chair. I think she stands up on the table with those. What those? Um, those. Make a phone. <laughs> Make a phone. So we have a. And a bright red lipstick. Yeah. <laughs> Make a phone. Beach. And you see a lipstick smudging on the on the, on the megaphone. So as you come to carefully, you get to the entrance of the door and you see Joe Biden. And then you shake his hand and then when you walk through, you see Trump running down the stairs. And then Trump tells you Moses is serving food in the kitchen. So when you get to the kitchen, 
you find the seats, you know, where the white chairs are. And then when you go to get it, you see Joe Biden, he's, he says, come sit next to me. And then, you know, as you sit down. James White. Sorry, James White, sorry. <laughs> James White. James White says, come sit, sit next to me. And then, you see AOC about to give a speech with a big megaphone. Is it a megaphone? And then you see all her lipstick smudging all over the megaphone. And then who's next? Johnson. Boris Johnson. <laughs> and then you, mark on his head. you see Boris Johnson walking in in the kitchen with a mop, mop the floor. and the mop falls on his head. It's silly but it remembers. You, you remember it. So he walks in with a mop. So, okay, that's just a little example of how it works, basically. It's a little example. But now, what I'm saying is, okay, I'm going to test myself, and I give the list in reverse order. So, <laughs> so you got... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you got Boris Johnson with his mop. You got ALC, yeah? You got James White telling me to sit next to him, yeah? You got Moses serving food, and you got Trump, and you got Boris. So Boris, no, not Boris. I mean um, Joe Biden. So Biden, Trump, Moses, James, AOC, Joe Biden. Boris Johnson. You're almost there. Boris Johnson. I keep. <gasps> you keep getting Biden and Boris. Yeah. It's the BB. <laughs> it's the BB. Oh yeah. So last one is um, Yay, Boris well Johnson. <laughs> so that's just an example, and with that little method, does that make sense? Yes. Just so using that little method, you can approach, you can bring your studies, you can bring this approach to Bible studies. Like for example, Acts twenty-seven, you know, verses, um, learning Bible stories, um, so it sticks in your head. You know, learning the line. So there's many ways you can bring the, use this method into how you can incorporate this method into your message, into your studies into learning the lines, into Bible stories or whatever. You know, I think it's just learning a list, learning name, but learning people's names and numbers, telephone numbers, you know, um, shopping list. Um, yeah, it's very powerful. So for me, that's easier than trying to repeat this over and over again until you remember it. Because probably if I test you a week later, you probably forget the list. But now you built a movie in your head. You built a mental picture in your head. And you remember that movie now. Of going to Kefali and seeing Trump. I mean, seeing Joe Biden. And then Trump. And then you've seen Moses. And then you've seen James White. Then you've seen ALC. And then you've seen Boris Johnson. You know, okay, this list. I've got this list in my head. You know, it's easy like that. I think it's all to do with level of interest as well. So whatever you're interested in, you can attach it to. So, you know, you're interested in travelling or going to that building or thinking about things in a head in a visual way, like making yeah. a movie, you're interested in that. Or like with the mind mapping, the way Sophie and Daisy are saying about mind mapping. I remember a friend years ago who used to take notes like that. And I tell you, I look at her paper and I just go, I don't get anything about what's going on. And, and I think it just, it really shows how our minds work differently and whatever your interest is, if you're interested in drawing pictures like that or and it's not that I don't like art because I love art but that mind mapping was total confusion to me I'm looking at it going I don't understand how that helps you to know where anything is and yet for them it's really helpful and I think it would be helpful for a lot of people because we approach things differently and our minds work differently and I think if you can use more than one technique mm. you know you could use that yeah, as well yeah, as yeah. learning the letters at the beginning of the word and you've got it mm. solidified but it, it's down to interest and it requires creativity and imagination mm. and whatever your your creativity creative side wants to do or is interested in then it stimulates that concentration mm. and that memorization as well it's the same mm. thing um, which is really interesting i know this is a, a complete aside point in a way but this morning when i was talking about education the most watched ted talk is about education and he, he's labeled it education kills creativity so our modern day way of educating people kills creativity because it downplays the arts and when you look at what we're doing now and how we're having to learn an increase of knowledge how we learn and how we memorize it's all about creativity 
And if we can't use creativity and we don't promote that in people and we say, you have to do it this way, rote learning, memorization, and it switches people off because they're not mm. interested and they've got low attention spans. Mm. And I see that with children. You know, you have to, like when Brother Rayon was saying, he illustrates it. I do that for the boys. I don't do it for myself when I'm taking notes, but if I'm t talking to them in a Bible study or whatever, I've got a whiteboard there and we're drawing on it. You know, and so, and I think mm. it's really, it's really important. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I, I love this method, but, you know, attach it to something you're interested to as well. I will make it more, whatever. But, yeah, so um, there's many yeah. learning styles. Um, and I think Debbie, to answer, to answer posh, you know, a bit of Debbie's question, how do you, how can you strengthen the brain? Doing things like this strengthens your brain, mm. it develops your brain, you know, you progress, you know, um, you're learning more, the more you memorise, you know, you're, you're forming new connections in your brain, you know, your brain mass is growing, and all these, all these things are going on in your brain all these neurons and I don't understand all that kind of stuff but I know when you think of a new thought when you learn something new something happens in your brain mm -hmm. you know things happen things grow and the more you do it the more you're developing your brain but if we don't and if we allow our, our worst enemy distraction to distract us from learning then we can't develop you know um okay. Can I say something? Yeah, I knew you, I knew you was coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, it's just picking up on the point that Emma made about um, interest. I think when you find a lot of the things that you do, you spend a lot of time on. Sometimes when you think about it, it it, it can be quite difficult. So, for example, you know, someone might have me doing a PhD and be like, oh, you know, that's so hard. How do you memorize all these things? How do you learn all these things? But if you ask them to tell you all the different episodes of Friends, what happened in each episode, they can tell you over the past five years, <laughs> what happened, yeah. the name of so-and-so, you know, how many children they have, you know, and then this happened, and she wore this red dress or this, you know, and they'll tell you all the details. Um, it's just that they're not getting examined on, you know, they don't take a Friends exam or, or whatever, and they show them and watch EastEnders. But while they're watching it, they're taking everything. It's just, they're taking it at, a, at an academic level. It's just that they're not being tested on it. You know, so I think I think interest is very big um, on things, and even myself, the things that I do, <laughs> some people really don't like them, but I, I, I because I really truly enjoy them, I can spend a long I spend a long month months time doing them. Science, I love science when it comes to um, computers and coding. I'll do that happily the whole day. But if you put me in a different job or doing something slightly different, I find it much more difficult to do something more simple because my interest is not there. So I think when it comes to things like Bible study or things to, to, to read. Or I think maybe it's important to just um, build up the ability to concentrate with something that you're interested in. So maybe pick pick a story that, that appeals to you, that you like, you know, and, and why there's all these different stories to appeal to different parts of our mind. Some people like chronology, like like Theodore, so he could sit out with the book of First Chronicles and I look at, I look at when I'm reading, so-and-so begat so-and-so, begat so-and-so, begat so-and-so. Mm -hmm. I switch off after the third one because I'm, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not so interesting. But I, I'm, I, I like, like Ezekiel chapter one talking about the, the four living creatures and um, in Revelation it talks about these, you know, these um, cherubims and stuff like when they, in, in Isaiah chapter six when they look so, you know, that's such a vivid look and it, that that kind of appeals to me. So I can spend more time studying those things. And so maybe sometimes it's just, um, <clears throat> I mean, obviously we have to do a lot of so, a lot of things that we're not interested in. But maybe when you're building this skill. It's important to do it on something that you're interested in, so that it's not as you won't find it as difficult. Mm. Just going on that point, though, I'm just thinking about increase of knowledge with Adam and Eve. Would there have been anything that they weren't interested in? You know, I don't think we're meant to be doing things we're not interested in, on one level. Now, obviously, we're in a sinful environment. There might be nasty things that we have to do now that we wouldn't have had to do if we were in a perfect environment. Maybe that's what the problem is. I don't know. But there's so much we force people to do that they're not interested in. Like, well, I'm talking as a parent now. And I'm thinking, that isn't really... Shouldn't we find a way to get them interested? Okay, let me give an example then. Yeah. So, like, education. Yeah. So, I've worked in schools as a um, TA. Yeah. Um, and as a mentor, like, in special schools. And I sit down, I'm like, I, I don't like this. 
Yeah. I don't like I'm bored. studying maths and English. I just can't do it. You know, like the kids know more than me. So what? What am I? What am I here to help for? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I don't like. I can't take sitting down and doing free work. You know, I struggled in uni. Like I couldn't do my uni work. You know, I had to pay someone to do my dissertation. You know, because I thought I can't write, sit down and study and write a five thousand essay. You know, I just. I'm not interested in it. I don't want to do it. It's not my skill. It's not my, you know, it's it's hard. But what I've been learning is, um, we all have to we all have to learn in our lives, throughout our lives. We all have to study. We all need education. It's just making education, um, catering. It's okay for so learning, understanding how this specific child mind works. How does he learn? You know, every, everyone has a way of learning. And one, Leon, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. You have five minutes. Okay, thanks. So one, she will, what's up? What's the saying? When one doesn't fit all, one yeah, way one of size learning, doesn't fit all. one size doesn't, doesn't fit all. all. Yeah. And usually school is like that, yeah, where they one make size. one size to fit all. But every child has his own way of learning. Get up to exams, yeah. You know, so they're not being catered for, so they're struggling. That's why we see we see kids struggling in school because kills creativity. Their creative way of learning. It's not being challenged, they're not able to use it, so it's been shut down in them. So they can't fo they can't focus in a way what's them. They can't be them basically. So we need to learn how to be us when we study. I wanna be me when I'm approaching this Bible study, I wanna be me when I'm making a presentation. What sticks up for me? How am I how you know, you gotta find your way of learning and I think that's when the fun comes into it, where you're using your skills mm. to learn. So for a child, you've got to understand how, he, how his mind works, how he learns, what's his learning style, what's his thinking style, and cater for that need. Otherwise, is his needs being met? So your next presentation is all the learning styles, is it? Who's? Yours. Mine. Yeah. There you go, brother Liam. <laughs> <laughs> but you know... We need the next one. We need, to, we need to understand this. Yeah. As people. Yeah. I mean, scientists are, bring, scientists are bringing these things out, psychologists are bringing these things out, but God created the brain. The teachers have to use He's the brain. A yeah, he created us. He created the brain, yeah. and if this other brain works, God created it. Also, his hands raised. Yeah. You know, so we just got to learn. It's us for us now to discover it and enjoy, enjoy learning, enjoy the process. This is why Adam was born. He didn't know much, and that's the next study. He didn't know much. He had to learn. He had to learn who he was. He had to learn who God was. He had to go through a process of learning before he even received Eve. He had to learn his identity, he had to learn his place, he had to learn his purpose, he had to learn boundaries. Mm -hmm. What else was there? There's so much. position. His position. Posi I know he's no. Place, place, purpose, his identity, boundaries. Yeah. Position. Okay. And he learned about provision. So Adam had provision. to learn so many things before he, he even came on the picture. You know. So that's another study in itself. But we see a learning process in Genesis, and um, and it was fun for him. You know, it was it made it fun. Um, let me read these comments. I really love to hear about that one. Um, I wonder which what what was that one? Some way, um, if you want to comment. Oh, Sophie said she's going to create a story a bit, bit, bit above that to remember the Millerite line and our ones. Oh, oh, okay, okay. And she says she'll let us know how it goes. So I told her to make a video. Now she's nervous. <laughs> but she said that last video is such a blessing. We need video, visual. Mm. It's great. It's all a blessing. Mm. So my last point is I got a few minutes left. I might be two minutes over time, three minutes over time. But last point, then I will close. Empathy. So empathy. Empathy is important. Empathy is very important, and that's one thing that we have to learn. Empathy. It's all about you know just listening to somebody, listening to understand. You wanted to understand somebody from their point of view, and um, the problem is now when it comes to listening. Even with listening to somebody speak, you know, you're in a conversation with someone and you're just listening to them speak. A lot of the times, a lot of downfalls is usually we listen with the intent. We don't listen to the intent to understand 
but with the intent to respond. So I'm listening to you, but I want to respond to what you're saying. I'm taking what you're saying, I, want, I, want, I need to respond to it. So I'll, let me jump in. We just jump in and jump in all the time without, without listening and understanding what they're saying. We feel like we have to respond. It's my duty to respond. It's my duty to try to save the day, you know, give my perspective or for me to offload. And that's not showing empathy because empathy, you know, when a child knows it's loved, one of the ways he knows it's loved is when he knows it's been heard. When, so when you know you've been heard by your parents, you know there's a love there. You know, when you know you've been heard by your teacher, your friends, you know that that person cares. You know they want to really get to understand you. It's the same in a relationship. When a wife, when a husband is heard by his wife, he knows his wife is listening. When a wife is heard by the husband, vice versa. So, empathy. In the context of Bible study or watching a presentation, a way to try to focus is, you know, you imagine you're in a speaker's shoes, you know, and you're likely to learn from this listening experience than if you used to do it dispassionately. So, trying to understand where the speaker is coming from and why they and why they bring out and why they're bringing out certain points trying to understand where they're coming from so when you're doing that you, you, your mind's engaged you're engaged to what the listener is saying and what they're saying from their perspective from their point of view you know and it helps you to hear it and feel it from their, from their perspective so it's, it's training to listen it's training to hear it's training to get to understand what the person's saying and where they're coming from you know without you Responding, you know, to, to respond without you taking it in first, you know, and it's it happen. It usually happens a lot where people you in a study and people just asking questions left, right, and centre, or making certain points what's not relevant to the topic. So they say something what's not on on topic, but they just want to say it anyway because out of excitement they want to share something, you know, and usually it's off topic, and that's a habit that we a lot of us have. You know, instead of just listening to what's being said, slowing down. Um, but around your time is up. Yeah. It's up, yeah. So, my last point. So, I'll just ponder on this point. Learning to concentrate. It's a, make, you know, it's a process of time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Learning to concentrate is a process of time. But the more you learn, the more you practice, it's like a muscle, it becomes stronger. Yeah? Yes, speak about concentration, I called you Ryan, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, I didn't mean to spend so long on this. You're supposed to get into uh, Jacob's Farmer Trouble. Um, but, I guess it was needed. So maybe we'll continue another time on this. Um, and concentration so with the tips given you know try them put them into practice and you know see how it goes and these tips are the same tips you need for empathy like you were saying so listening concentration using your imagination your creativity to empathize with someone mm -hmm. so the same techniques to learn or memorize a message is the same to listening to someone and their problems mm -hmm. it's the same to show empathy you have to have imagination and um, and really concentrate, like you say, on what someone's saying. Yeah, mm. it's really good. Yeah. So let's pray. If if, if someone's got any final comments, if they want to say anything, now's your time, or we can just close. Yeah. Let's, let's close in. Um, dear Father in heaven, um, we give thanks 
for this blessed time that we have to just um, look at your word, to study and to fellowship and learn how our minds work. You know, as we as we as we've been looking on looking at how to study, how to focus, how to concentrate. All these things are important when we approach your word, because it's one of the downfalls um, that we have. Um, it's a big struggle for many of us, and the thing is, it's not really addressed as often, and so we don't even think to learn how to focus. We just try to do it anyway, and many times we end up failing, and feeling frustration, and I just pray that you will help us to learn all these techniques and how to better ourselves and when we do learn to focus we can approach your word in a better way in a better state of mind and we're, we're, we're able to take in more of what's being taught and we just pray that you continue to be with us throughout the rest of the day and guide us as we be with us as we separate in jesus name amen